Hello guys, welcome to Fire Racer Workshop and in today's video, we're gonna be checking out another experiment on Tinkercad, not on Orcad, Tinkercad. Now for this particular experiment, the aim is to find out the reverse bias characteristics of a Zener diode. So let's just fire up Tinkercad and just make a new circuit. I'm just gonna show you step by step how to make this circuit this time. Because in the last video that I shot that you can check out on the pop-up eye button on Tinkercad, I didn't show you how to make the circuit and the students were just messing it up. So I'm just gonna show you the entire circuit building process for this particular video. First of all, what you need is a Zener diode and over here on this palette, in the journal palette, you can see there's already a Zener diode available. So we're just gonna drag it. Now, if you're just clicking on the Zener diode and you are just like moving it here and there, you can just press the R key to rotate the diode. Now I'm just gonna rotate, I'm just gonna rotate it in this particular orientation and there's one more thing that I need to tell you you can see this silver colored strip that is present on the diode this indicate which is the negative terminal of the diode so the current is gonna flow from here to here okay so this in this condition the diode will be in forward bias if you connect your positive to the cathode and negative to the anode the diode will be in a reverse bias condition okay so you just gotta be careful on which orientation you connect the diode because the students were messing it up again now I'm just gonna import a breadboard not a breadboard actually, I'm just gonna import a power supply because we don't need a breadboard for this particular experiment and breadboard would make this experiment a bit messier so please just don't use a breadboard for this particular experiment. So I'm just gonna import a power supply. Okay, so in this particular experiment we only need one power supply. We just don't need a hell lot of power supplies for this particular experiment. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna keep it here and I'm just gonna rotate the diode again because I just figured out the circuit would look much better if we just rotate the diode. We need a resistor. I'm just going to import a resistor over here. You can see our resistor is already present. Let's just rotate the resistor. I'm just going to place it near the diode. We need two multimeters. So first multimeter will be measuring the voltage across the diode and the second multimeter will be measuring the current that's flowing through the diode. Okay. So however, you can use this display also to measure the current, but it's just better to like keep a multimeter handy because otherwise the students are just going to confuse and I just don't want to confuse anybody. Anyways, so let's just uh, wire everything up. Be sure, make sure to use proper color codes for the wires. Otherwise, the circuit is just going to look really messy. I'm just going to use red wires to first of all connect the power supply wires to the resistor. Just going to straighten up the wires. You can see there are some guidelines that are they are all the crosshairs just appear when your uh, wires are just square with the uh, with the Tinkercad like with the, with this window. So I'm just gonna connect the diode over here. Just gonna move it down a bit so that it's just straight. I'm just gonna connect the multimeter, and now I'm just gonna switch to a black color. So actually, I just switched the switch to the black color in this wire also. So I'm just gonna switch it back again. So. Now I'm just going to connect this particular ammeter. So I'm, we're just going to set it to amperage. And now we're just going to connect this multimeter to the diode. So this is going to be our positive one. This is going to be a positive lead. So actually, let's just cut it out and let's just place it over here. This way it can be like a bit neater. This is going to be a positive lead. And over here, from here, this is going to be a negative lead. And we are just going to route it back to the power supply let's just straighten up all the wires okay we are all set let's just color code this red as well because this is just connected to the positive terminal of the emitter okay so your circuit is complete and now you're just gonna set the parameters for the Zener diode and over here I'm just taking the resistor to be 100 ohms okay so 100 ohms just work perfectly for this particular experiment and for the amperage so this multimeter is on amperage this multimeter is on volt and I'm just going to set the diode to a breakdown voltage of 4.7 volt, 4.75 volt. This particular diode actually we have simulated in the ORCAD software. You can click on the pop-up eye button to just check out my video on the ORCAD software about this particular experiment. So a voltage is set, the Zener voltage is all set. Let's just set our power supply to zero volts. Now we are going to click on start simulation and a simulation will begin. Now at zero volts, we are gonna get zero ampere and zero volts across the diode. Now we are gonna increase the voltage of our power supply at an increment of one volt and we'll go uh, with an increment of one volt up to four volts. So at one volts, it's again zero ampere. At two volts, it's again zero ampere. At three volts, it's again zero ampere. At four volts, it's again zero ampere. 
Now after you have reached 4 volts at an increment of 1 volts, so you have essentially got yourself 5 readings at which the current is 0. Now what you are going to do is you are going to move at an increment of 0 0.2 volts. Okay, now you are going to move at 0 4.2, 4.4, 4.6. 4.8 now at 4.8 you are getting some current values now let's just move to 5 volts now 5.2 5.4 5.6 5.7 sorry 5.8 5 and then we're just gonna go to 6 volts okay and now we're gonna go with 6.2 6.4 6.6 6.8 6.7 and then 7 volts. After you have taken all the readings up till 7 volts moving in the increments as described before, you are going to obtain yourself with the following readings. Now you can take more number of readings if you want but I am just going with 20 readings in total. So here are all the readings that we need to plot our graph. Now to plot our graph I am going to be using a software that is open source software so I am just going to link uh, this software down below in the description box where you can easily download it and this software is just really handy dandy so I would recommend every one of you to just download this software okay so let's just open this software so this is a UI of the software if you want to move your graphs here and there you can just click on this button and now you can just like move your uh, graph here and there but we are just gonna go to access settings double click on the access and then you're just gonna set your access variables. Now for the minimum, what we need for the x axis is one. And for the maximum, as we are gonna have our diode voltage uh, in uh, on the x-axis, what we need is, we, so we need a maximum of six on the x-axis. So that's what we're gonna set. So I'm just gonna set the maximum to six. Actually, it's just gonna be the other way around, sorry. So this is gonna be one at maximum and minus six at the minimum. So let's just hit OK. Now you can see our graph has shifted right there. Double tap on it again. Now let's just go to the Y axis. Again we need the maximum to be 1 and the minimum to be minus 13.7 so we'll take it around at 14. So let's just do it up to 14. Okay. Minimum to be 1 and maximum to be actually minimum to be 14 and minimum to be and ma sorry minimum to be minus 14 and maximum to be 1 and just click OK. Now you can see our graph has moved to the third quadrant. Now you're going to click on this button right here so, it, so we can just plot a point series in our graph. Just click it. Now you can see over here you can enter all your x values and over here you can enter all your y values. So I'm just going to copy down all the x values. Now you have to take the voltage across the diode. Please just don't take the power supply voltage. I've seen many students do that. Don't take the power supply voltage. Your graph is the VI characteristics of a diode. It's not the power supply voltage versus the diode, uh, the current across the diode graph. So just please make sure that you just take the right voltage. Now I'm just going to hit, hit copy, uh, I mean control C and I'm just going to copy it right here. Just select it and control V. Now you can see all the values have been copied to here. Now similarly we can do it for the Y axis as well. Control C and then over here control V. Now you can see all our values have been entered. Now we don't need to necessarily change these settings but if you want like your you want a different line style and if you like want to eliminate the points and all then you can just like change the settings over here you can even change the uh, size of the points and all you can just like hit ok and you can see over here now the corrector six graph has been plotted over here you can see we are just getting a steady uh, zero volts over here now the voltage now the current is just gonna rise as there is a rise in the voltage as the voltage like approaches the zener voltage of the diode and you can see over here the voltage is rising continuously along with the current so this is our reverse characteristics graph but however you just get a much 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 more better graph if you perform this experiment on ORCAD now you can just see on your screen the graph that we got from ORCAD software now you can see like it is just hell better because we were just taking about a thousand readings in, the, in that experiment. It's practically not possible to take thousand readings in Tinkercad because you just gotta uh, handwrite all the handwrite, like all the readings and all. So it's just practically not possible to take thousand readings on uh, Tinkercad. And the diode specifications are all, also not like clearly mentioned on Tinkercad. 
Tinkercad is not a professional software, by the way. So it's better to do it on OrCAD to do it in a bit more professional way and to obtain a better graph. But still, if you want to perform this experiment on Tinkercad, this is the best way to do it. And that's all for this video, guys. Over here now, I'm just going to show you my circuit again. Just please just do copy this circuit down. Don't change anything. Keep the orientation of the diode correct. Attach your voltmeter across the diode and your emitter like in series with the diode. And please just like don't take any other voltage source or just don't take any function generator and all uh, along with the diode and all. So that's all guys. That's all for the video. Thank you all for watching.